hello hi everyone welcome back to our channel good morning good afternoon good evening i greet you all according to your time and locations you'll be watching this video yes my dear viewers i am back again with another update so guys i have a video here how like we all to watch but before then if you're meeting my channel for the very first time you're highly welcome please kindly do all to like share and subscribe leave your thought on the comment section let us know what you think about this video and i will see you towards the end another story a federal high court in abuja on thursday granted bail to the suspended deputy commissioner of police abba Kari, in the sum of 50 million naira Kiari was arrested on February 14, 2022, after the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency declared him wanted over alleged links with an international drug cartel. He was arraigned alongside four other members of the police intelligence response team. Since then, bail applications by Kiari and the four officers had been rejected. While in the ruling on Thursday, James Omotoshaw, the presiding judge, said the charges against the defendants are bailable. The court, however, added that Kiari's release from prison custody is dependent on what happens in another case in which he is being tried alongside four others for their alleged involvement in drug trafficking. I mean, uh, Rufai, only yesterday we were discussing, you know, the uh, detention of uh, the CBN or suspended CBN governor as well as the sub suspended EFCC chairman. And now we are seeing that um, Abba Kiari has been released. But the fact still remains. What was the issue in the beginning? Why was his bill not granted to start with? Those are the questions a lot of people are asking right now. Okay, so even with this bill granted, he might not be let out because it was a bill for one case. There's still another case. There are two substantive yes, cases. Right. Number one case is about, you know, the connection to mm -hmm. drug thing, you know, that NDLA put together. And secondly, is the declaration of assets, yeah. you know, which is quite very shocking. And when, when you see the asset, asset that were listed, I wonder, goodness me, a DCP had this level of assets and all of that. So that's, that's one. Secondly, it's the legal process. I mean, somebody pointed out something to me uh, this morning, and he said, Rufai, do you know that the entire Equerimadu case, you know, took nine months from arrest to prosecution in the UK? But guess what? This Abakiari case has gone on over 18 months. And nothing has been done as regards this Abakiari case. So it shows that our legal system grinds very slowly. I think what we should do is we should be able to expedite action on this case so that we come to a conclusion as to what really happened, all right, as regards this Abakiari case. But a little background about Abakiari, we all remember the story. Yes. And this is a, gra a grace to grass stories. This is a man that was given a standing ovation in our national assembly oh. for his contributions to the nation this was a super super cop this man could do no wrong only for all of those things and the evidence they brought out to come out so it speaks volumes about our country mm -hmm. and this was also a blight on the authorities and the police force because this man was in charge of so many and give him his kudos too he cracked a lot of crimes you remember the evans case and super all of that super cop what? as it was super called yeah. but only when we now remember the association of super cop you know with people like arch poppy and the likes and the case of drugs at the same time and declaration of assets so please we also want the judicial system to be quick I don't see why the court couldn't have gone through his court process now, by now, and we should even have gotten a judgment by now. Right. And please, but also extension. INEC should also, and the court process should also expedite action on the case of Mr. Ari, the INEC wreck that caused all the shenanigans yes. in Adamawa State. Because you see, when we delay justice, it starts to look as though justice is denied. Absolutely. We need to bolster a buffer legisl our, our, our judiciary processes, our right. judicial processes. Right. Dr. Abati, if you can okay. quickly the add your comment on this. The principle is justice uh, delayed is justice denied. Every accused person under the laws of Nigeria has a right to fair hearing, as enshrined in Section 36 of the 1999 Constitution. However, Bill, however, Bill, you know, uh, as we've seen in this case, is determined by the court. If it's not administrative bill, this is court bill that you are dealing with. But we have every reason, you know, to express concern about the fact that why has it taken 18 months? 
Now, one of the issues here was that when his uh, counsel first applied for bail, the argument, the counter argument, was that it would be a flight risk. He was accused of being, in, of being part of a drug cartel that runs from, you know, uh, Ethiopia, through Ethiopia, Nigeria, all the way to Brazil. Now, so that's the local case here. And the ADLA got the fiat of the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation uh, to charge him to court, and they filed 24 charges against him. That's one. What made the matter complicated was that subsequently, the Office of the Attorney General now came and uh, filed a case for uh, Abakari to be extradited to the United States. But Justice Young Equo said, look, I mean, this is uh, mischievous, this is hypocritical that the office of the attorney general at the time should have known that if a person is uh, already being tried for an offense in uh, his own country, you, you cannot uh, file uh, uh, extradition proceedings or ask the court to grant extradition under such circumstances. And that was the court of justice in Yang Equo. What was the matter there? In the Hush Papi case, Ramon Abbas, a.k.a. Hush Papi, who used to be very popular with a lot of ladies in Nigeria until they ran into trouble, you know, he used to the, be the, the, with a lot of ladies. Well, 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 that's just an aside. <laughs> the, a U.S. District Court indicted Abakiari in this particular case. So there's still other that American angle uh, to it. And then this other case that, uh, you know, very complicated. But yes, you know, later the uh, Nigerian police force, uh, on the recommendation of the Inspector General of Police, decided to suspend him and remove him and his colleagues from that uh, police intelligence unit, which had been a very effective, well-admired uh, force, uh, unit of the force, and for which Abakiari himself was very well decorated and praised. So there's that uh, crisis also at a personal level. But the bigger loser in all of this would seem to be the Nigerian police force. You know, that you could have officers, about four or five officers, being linked with untidy things. But in any case, on the matter, until the matter is resolved by the court of law, uh, we cannot pronounce any judgment in terms of whether the accused persons are guilty or not. As always. Well, let's take another story. A federal high court in Abuja on Thursday granted bail to the suspended deputy commissioner of police, Abakiari, in the sum of 50 million naira. Kiari was arrested on February 14, 2022, after the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency declared him wanted over alleged links with an international drug cartel. He was arraigned alongside four other members of the police intelligence response team. Since then, bail applications by Kiari and the four officers had been rejected. While in the ruling on Thursday, James Omotoshaw, the presiding judge, said the charges against the defendants are bailable. The court, however, added that Kiari's release from prison custody is dependent on what happens in another case in which he is being...